The Backrack Group has been building better workforces with extraordinary talent based on specific functional experience for over 40 years. Within their many practice areas, they specialize in helping organizations of all sizes tailor staffing solutions from mailroom to CEO. They work on various types of employment roles, including temporary, temporary to permanent contract, and permanent basis. Allen has been in the staffing field for over 30 years. Prior to joining the Backrack Group, he owned two highly successful search firms. Now, the host of the Entrepreneurial Vibration Show, Sandy V. Terry. And here we are this morning with Alan Eichmann, a staffing recruiting expert and entrepreneur. And this morning, he is going to share some of his secrets on how he became an entrepreneur. Hi, Alan. How are you doing? Good morning, Sandy. How are you today? Very good. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your um, experiences and your tips and tricks with us. So why don't you tell us, how did your entrepreneurial life start? It started way, way back, many, <laughs> many, many years ago. Um, I never went to college, so I worked every type of job there was. And you find out what you want to do in life and what you don't want to do in life. So I ended up behind the bar as a bartender, which is probably the best job I ever had. <laughs> and um, you know, through the bar, you meet some interesting people. Um, I was bartending and selling real estate, actually. And I met this gentleman one day. He said, you'd be great in my business. Said, what business is that? He goes, the recruiting business, staffing business. I knew nothing about it. I said, do you make money? <laughs> <laughs> he goes, yeah. I said, do you get paid? Because in real estate, I never made any money. <laughs> right. So I decided to um, take the leap of faith. And this gentleman um, knew the business from really, really well. And he, I sat there, I learned, I worked for this gentleman for one year. I fell in love with the business. Mm -hmm. And about a year later, I borrowed, um, I maxed out three credit cards and um, opened up my first place. So right there and then, immediately, so after you were bartending, you knew a year later that you wanted to go ahead and start your entrepreneur journey. Yes. Okay. It was, um, it was very interesting because I am a people person. Okay. And I love dealing with people and we meet a lot of interesting people in this business. Yeah. And really it's just bringing people together. Right. But you were not afraid of taking that leap of faith in maxing out the credit cards to make that decision of going into the entrepreneur life? I've always wanted more. Okay. The best bet is me. Mm -hmm. So I'm always going to bet on myself. I took that leap of faith. Was I afraid? Yeah. But you know something? I think that today as an entrepreneur, you have to take a leap of faith. Right. You have to take chances. Um, as, as you get older, you take, I call calculator risks. <laughs> uh, but when you're younger, you have no fear. I like that. Calculator risk. Very yes. good. So I, back, to, back in the day, I, I learned the business really, really fast. Okay. I found a way to... Uh, become friends with people mm -hmm. and then give them what they want. So you surrounded yourself with the right network, with the right people to learn everything faster. I had tendency of making friends okay. in, the, in, the, in the corporate business world. And when you produce for them, you can make friends, but if you don't produce for them, they just push you aside. Mm -hmm. But I, I had an uncanny um, knack for this business that I was able to make friends, produce and deal with corporate America um, differently than a lot of other people. Mm -hmm. But you had that naturally. I mean, you didn't go to college, you didn't learn all these skills. You had that in you. I had no choice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, survival. Survival, you know, okay. but when you find something, I have passion for it. Mm -hmm. When you have passion, you're going to be successful. So I love what I did. So they always say, um, if you love what you do, you never worked a day in your life. <laughs> I hear that often. Yeah, but it's really the truth. Yes. So after 30 plus years, I always say I never worked a day in my life because I, yeah. I, I, I love what I did. So brought me where I am here today, which is pretty cool. Very good, very good. So tell me, then what happened? So you, you got your credit cards, you maxed them out, you learned everything, and then and then how, how did you go about opening that first business? I just went out, I found a partner. Okay. I found a partner that was educated. Mm -hmm. He was able to write, I was, I can do things that he couldn't do. So collectively together, okay. you have to find somebody that, that but you are not. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to find that good, that good partner. So I found somebody that was, he wasn't me, I wasn't him, but collectively together we made an unbelievable team. Okay. And we started our first company and we built it up and built it up. We were doing technology recruiting and then we went into legal recruiting, both permanent and temporary. And we were rocking and rolling. You know, we were in Manhattan and we were growing and we were scaling and we had a phenomenal company. But I wanted, I wanted more. I always felt that 
if I'm going to be in the staffing industry, um, you have to you have to be a full service search mm -hmm. firm. So my ex partner, um, he only wanted to stay in technology and legal. My philosophy was that if we're dealing with these major corporations, we can be in technology, we can be in legal, we can be accounting, finance, real estate, the whole gamut. So you wanted to expand across all the different industries. Yeah. But I found that really interesting that you decided at one point in time that you really needed a partner, that you were looking at, okay, where do I need to expand in the areas where I don't have the expertise and I need to find somebody that can complement me in the areas where I don't have that? You can't, you can't be afraid to work with somebody better than you. Yes, exactly. You just can't. Exactly. You know, you always want to, you always want to learn. You don't learn from people. You teach people that. Right. You bring people up. You always want to learn from somebody better. Right. Not that he was better, but he had a different, he brought a different component. Yeah, it was complimentary. Right, and, yes. then, and that, made a, that made a phenomenal, we made a phenomenal team. Right. We started out with two people, three people. We started growing and growing and growing. Um, and then we then you come into you hit the ebbs and flows of the business. Right. So if you're just doing technology and if you're just doing legal, and the technology business crashes, you're done. Right. So after going through a couple of those cycles, mm -hmm. I decided that the best way to survive it's like diversification. Mm -hmm. You have to be diversified in your portfolio, right? In life, in friends, and everything else like that. You don't want to have all your eggs in one basket, no. basically. Especially in business. Exactly. So at that point, you know, um, we were together for. 17 plus years mm -hmm. and we sat down and decided that it was time for me to time for me to move on mm -hmm. and at that point I, I met a gentleman named Richard Bacharach who had a we were, we were friends in the business you know we were, we always helped each other through good times and tough times mm -hmm. we became good friends and um he had an account he had the Bacharach group um which was an accounting and finance firm they dabbled in a little bit of real estate I had technology and legal we we, we shook hands we kind of Kind of put it together mm -hmm. you know and you, you kind of fast forward it i don't know 15 years later <laughs> we started growing and he hit his vision i hit my vision we took it to another level basically new york and then we started opening other offices then along the way we met a gentleman named anthony fonzo mm -hmm. uh, he was the one he came from a very unique background where i was kind of a street guy mm -hmm. he came from a more of a corporate background right. large companies mm -hmm. so when you put it all together he helped this company go to the level where it is today. And now you have a presence nationwide. Nationwide. Uh, went to happen without Anthony. Um, he brought a skill set to the table that was unbelievable. And him and I complimenting each other. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, now we're nationwide. We're here in Boca Raton today. Um, we're looking to build up the Boca Raton office and um, from a sales capacity, from a business capacity. Mm -hmm. We've been here two years right now. And it seems to be moving, moving in the right direction. I'm very proud of, of what we accomplished. But how did you go about being able to grow exponentially? I mean, to get from being an entrepreneur, from maxing out your credit cards to now having, how many offices do you have? We have, have our corporate headquarters in Manhattan. Right. And I believe we have 13 offices. 13 around, offices. Around I mean, how, how did you go to, to be able to capitalize and to be able to uh, able to actually have that level of growth you need and great, manage it? You need great people. Yes. It starts at the top. So you need excellent people. So um, between Anthony and myself and Richard, we kind of came up with a model that works. Mm -hmm. And once you do the first one, it's easy. Uh -huh. People think it's hard, but once you do the first one and it works, uh -huh. we go from California. And Chris Pop was our guinea pig, I call him. He went to California. Then we went to San Francisco, Las Vegas, Ohio, Philadelphia, Chicago, Long Island, um, Boca Raton. I'm missing, I'm actually missing a couple as yeah, we speak. Yeah, yeah. But you have to have good market managers. Right. Like James Samarco runs Boca Raton. Matt Conway's in Philadelphia. Chris mm -hmm. Pop is in San Francisco. Evan Price is in Long Island. So you create the model, you create the operations and the back end. Yes. And once you have the infrastructure in place and you know the framework, if you will, then you basically go to the other places and do the same thing. The difference is the people. Yes. The difference is making sure that you know the market in all the different places the and the target audience. Right, the market is very important. Right. So we target areas that we know we can kind of do well. Right. You know, and then we put the right person in there. You need the right people. You know, you really, really do. You need people, like I said earlier, that have um, a passion for what they do and believe in the organization right. and they have and believe in you and believe in what we've been doing. So we've been very, very fortunate enough to surround myself with those, with those type of people. Right, you right. Know, so it's very, it's very exciting, okay. very exciting. Now, let's shift a little bit here and let's get into the personal oh, well. side of the entrepreneurship. Um, so why don't you tell me the why? 
why did you go into this path of entrepreneurship? I didn't know any other way. I wasn't a corporate guy. I wasn't the type of person that you can sit at your desk and work nine to five. Mm -hmm. And I wanted a lot of things in life. Um, a lot on the materialistic side that you'll find out along the way mean absolutely nothing in the big picture. But I always wanted, I didn't know what I wanted, but I knew I wanted something. And as I started achieving little, little, little things, you want more. And then once you start developing a business and you see your business grow, also you want more personal. You want that house, you want that car, you want that boat, you want that yacht club, you want, you want everything else that you see other people have and say, if they can have it, why can't I have it? Now, these things are all wonderful, but in the big picture, I mean absolutely nothing. There are some you've learned as an entrepreneur. You learn so much about yourself, what's over the years, what's more important to you. And yes, you can have all these wonderful things. But if you're not surrounded by good family and you're not surrounded by uh, by just love and, and somebody that's gonna support you a thousand percent, it's a disaster. It means nothing. No? It means absolutely nothing. So what was that lesson that you learned that you would like to share with others? Follow your dream. Don't let anything get in the way. Um, because if, if, if you don't follow your dream, you're, you're not going to be happy. And happiness to me is the, most, is the most important thing. But also, don't leave your family behind. Make sure that you put that time into them. Make sure you go to your son's baseball game. Make sure you go to your daughter's game. Make sure you make time to spend with your family and your wife. But don't, don't stop dreaming. Just, I'm a regular guy and I followed my dream. I paid a price for it, but I have no regrets. My regrets are, are far and few between. And by the way, I say I would do it differently. I probably would, but unfortunately it was the only way I knew how. I knew how to do one thing, get up in the morning and go to work. But as I look back on my career, um, and I, like I said before, there's so many advances in technology, we can do things differently. Yes. You still can have passion, you still can have desire, you still can have a, a dream. I never thought I'd be where I am today. You have to have passion, heart, and desire for what you want. And if you have that, you'll you'll you'll, you'll have what you you'll have you'll get what you want today. Mm -hmm. And you won't you won't miss a beat. But again, don't leave everyone else behind. Understand one thing: things will change. And if you're not if you're not prepared for that, prepared for that change, there's gonna be a problem. Mm -hmm. So make sure you have a a good accountant, <laughs> okay. a good lawyer, a good staff. Actually, people that really care about coming to work every day. In my life, I, I cared about everybody that worked for us. Mm -hmm. Everybody was important to me. Um, I made sure I knew everybody's name in the company. I always said thank you to people. Um, yeah. I, try, I, I, I always wanted people to feel good. Yeah. You know, when I walked into the office, um, I just wanted people to feel comfortable and creating a place where they can call home. Today, you know, you have the old school guys like myself, I don't even like to call them millennials. Everyone uses that word, I don't like that word, because I just think they're just a different generation. Right. And if you can find a way to bring, bridge the two together, mm -hmm. old school, new school, which we found how, how to do, mm -hmm. when you put that together, it's unbelievable what can happen. Yeah. We found a way to do that. You know, old school, old school values. You know, everyone has values today, but old school is shaking somebody's hand, going to dinner. Um, new school today is kind of working on the technology side. But if you can find a way to bridge that gap, Blend. It's unbelievable. Yeah. We found we found that way. And learn from each other. We learn from each other. That's yeah. correct. That's beautiful. That, yeah, and we found that way. We found a way to do that. Um, we found a way to um, make people feel really, really comfortable. All right. So a closing tip here for all the entrepreneurs in the world. What would you say to them? Fasten your seatbelt. <laughs> it's, it's going to be a long ride. Follow your dream. Don't leave. Don't leave anybody. Don't don't leave anybody behind. Take take them with you for the ride. And let them, let them feel the good and let them feel leave the bad let them leave the bad at home. Just let them let just let them feel the good because there is a lot of good that you that you can that you can bring. Very good. Thank you very much. Oh, it was a thanks. pleasure to oh, meet it's you. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Very good. Thanks. Now we would love to hear from you. Tell us on the comments below. Was this advice helpful to you today? And how can you put some of what you learn into practice right away to start to see a difference in your entrepreneurial journey? Also, don't forget, if you found this podcast helpful, make sure to subscribe, share with your friends, and hit the like button so we know to make more podcasts like this one.